Fishing the DMV has big plans for the future, but to get there, I need your help. Our first Patreon goal is 100 Patreon subscribers. For $6 a month, which is less than a pack of Cinco's or a Jackhammer Chatterbait. For more information on our Patreon, please go check it out in the episode description down below. Thank you so much. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good evening, everybody. How are we doing on Monday Night Live? Could I get a little bit of a sound check here? How am I sounding tonight? I know on Instagram we are not working for some reason, even though we're supposed to be live on Instagram and Twitter, but we'll deal with that later. Uh, We got a really good show today, and we got a really good guest. We're going to be talking about some of the things that are going on in the industry right now, because it's uh, it was interesting. This is something I've always wanted to talk about, and I felt like there's no time like the present to be talking about them. Um, So please, if we could have some people give us an old comment. Sounds good. Looking rough. Yeah, I know. Thank you for the hair. Um, She was supposed to help me with my hair, but I said, you know, screw it. We're just going to go as is. This is what happens when I look like after I get done with work and I'm pulling my hair out. Um, We got a lot of things that we're going to be talking about tonight. And and without further ado, before we get into some of our topics, here we go. The man, the myth, and the legend. He's been on this show a couple of times. Uh, He's actually credited with an individual winning an NVKBA event at Lake Mooney this past year. And we're probably be getting to talk about that too. Marty Lawson. Marty, how are you doing tonight, sir? Wonderful. Wonderful. Glad to be on tonight. Um, thank you so much for, for coming on on such short notice. I mean, really, to, to, to kick the your show videos, off. Your videos, your your audio is kind of failing again. Fix that. Is it better now? It's better now. There you go. Oh, fan- fantastic. Um, All right. <laughs> yeah, so basically, boats are getting absolutely insane right now. And so I don't even know how to go. With, uh, you know, I'm just going to pull this up right now. Do, 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 do. This was a boat I found. And I was just cruising online. And this is kind of, guys, what, what, what really prefaced at the show today. Because this has been stuff I've been thinking about for a while. And it doesn't have to just do with boats. But this is kind of what broke the camel's back. Um, this thing right here is an Icon boat that is listed on Boat Trader. And that price is not wrong. It is 100500 you know, 500 <laughs> over almost $200,000 for a bass boat, ladies and gentlemen. That thing, I do not know if it has all the bells and whistles. It looks like it's got 360 and a couple of graphs, so maybe. I There are so many issues in the bass fishing industry right now. It is absolutely preposterous. And I know we've had the debate about forward-facing sonar, and I want to get into that with, with you, Marty. No. It, are uh, we hitting a breaking point with boat prices? Because even now with kayaks, they're getting close to $10,000, $15,000 for a fully rear kayak. Yeah, I mean... You know, I'm I'm simple. I, I'm a tackle junkie, like you can see on the wall behind me. But you know, I, I fish out of my little ten foot two bass raider, and I'm happy. But when I, you know, I I look at a lot of videos and I watch monster bass, and they just had a discussion the other day about you know swim baits and the cost of swim baits and. I just, I just look across the board and I look at tackle prices all over the place. Um, and I really think that the increased cost of everything fishing related goes back to COVID. Because when COVID hit and everything shut down, one of the things that everyone could do was go get in a boat and go fishing. You are away from everybody. You can go out on the water, enjoy yourself, and go fish. And even, you know, I bought I bought my bass raider right at the very beginning of COVID. And I had to sit there at Bass Pro Shop and just wait for one to become available and mm-hmm. just keep clicking until I got one because they were sold out. And then I looked at kayaks, too. They were all sold. You couldn't get them. So then you had this this you know run on everything fishing related and everyone wanted to get in the kayaks and you know the kayaks have come a long way in the past even just the past three years and i just see that was a big indication of the prices of everything going up because the the fishing market just exploded with covid i think um you know it's just 
gone crazy with the price of everything has gone up and even you know the guys that make their own lures and things like that plastisol has gone up and hooks have gone up and and you know the the blanks for painting your own crankbaits and all of that stuff has gone up um i i, I don't i don't know how the small guys are going to stay you know relevant it's it's you know it's getting to be like you're going to have these superstar superstores for fishing tackle mm -hmm. and everyone else is going to go by the wayside so you know like i've been on your show before i want to support the local guys yeah um and that's very important it, it, these guys one they're trying to make a little bit of money they're not trying to you know they're not trying to make enough money to go buy a hundred and fifty four thousand dollar bass boat these guys are doing stuff because they like to do it and it's a passion that they have and you want to present the product to fishermen that are out there that just want something different at a cheaper cost but now even you know you you look at the the black friday sales on tackle warehouse discount tackle omnia fishing amazon all of it who can compete with those big big markets now the the online stores you know you take jake's bait and tackle i mean they have a following that's been established over a long time and they're not going to lose those customers yeah. but it's hard for them to even compete when you say you know you look at a you look at a jackhammer in a local store there's 17 18 19 bucks but you can turn around and hit a sale on tackle warehouse and get them for 14. how do you compete with that um and then of course the price of boats uh, <laughs> it's outrageous i mean you know i mean it goes along with with the truck that you need to buy to pull that boat. Look at the price of trucks now over the past, I don't know, say seven, eight years. It's a standard insane, truck. Dude. You can't buy, you know, I drive a 2011 F 150. Um, there's no. No, it, it, so, it's absolutely good to go. It's absolutely insane. And, and the, the, the vehicle prices is something I want to hit on because at least I'm familiar with that where I was talking to a dealership. You know, my Ford has close to 300,000 miles on it. It's going to die someday. It's like when you get a dog up there in ages, like, you know, it's not if, it's when. And, and I was talking, it's like, why is everything the Laramie, the Platinum? And it's because the dealerships at the time, a couple of years ago, were like people would buy it. So we stopped making everything else. And I, th I think the issue is here, and this is what I see with the boating industry, because they're only making these premium boats, the premium kayaks with, with all the premium parts and stuff, you can't market that down so much because yeah. at some point you're going to lose money. And I think what's scary is what you're seeing with this price is not just inflation. It's that if all the boats across every single, every single different type of boat, if they're all premium products with premium parts, when the bottom drops out, those really can't go down in price much more. And I think that's where I think there's this mislead. I thought so too. And I asked guys like, Hey, you know, when will these trucks come down? He's like, dude, they're not going to come down much because if you have a Laramie Ram truck that can only go down so much before they lose money. Yeah. And I think that's what people don't understand in the industry. If, if this, if this icon boats, uh, you know, almost $200,000, it can only be market down so much before, you know, they lose money on it. And I right. think that's, what's really crazy to me is, this escalate and i get it because they have a better return on their investment they get a little bit more money off a sell of something with a lot of accessories 100 percent understand that and this comes down to something to me that no one's answered where does the debt go who owns the debt on all this stuff so if i decide i'd probably be divorced carly if i did this but if i bought this icon boat for you know probably the gdp of, of rwanda at one and guys i'll put this image up again because i don't know if you saw this i don't know if it's on the thumbnail but this is a boat I saw on boat. Uh, it's on a uh, boat trader. It's close to two hundred thousand dollars. If I buy this, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a note for about twenty years probably. I don't own the debt, but then what a lot of pro fishermen do is they hold it for two years and they pass it. Are we just dealing with debt that just gets pushed from one to another to one to another? Yeah, I, I mean think it's so. insane. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, that price right there. I, 
I, I, I don't know. I, I couldn't justify it myself. I mean, even if I, I don't know, maybe if I won a lottery, then okay. Then I'd say, Hey, I like that boat. I'm going to go get it. But mm -hmm. you know, I, I work a full-time job. You work a full-time job. I have a mortgage. I have car payments. I have, you know, home upkeep, all these different things. I, I can't afford that. You know, that's <laughs> my wife's van. The payment is not even half that. I just, I, I don't, I personally, I could not justify even yeah. if I thought I could do it. I, I couldn't justify spending that much money on a boat. And then I, I, I talk I about can't. all the maintenance that comes along with it and the storage and, you know, everything you know it's like uh it's it's in the business that i work in 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 dod you know if you buy something there's what they call the omen tail associated with it which is all the maintenance and the people and all the different things that go along with supporting one project or one one thing when people buy boats they got to think about all the maintenance and look at mm -hmm. your gas prices and you know all these different things registering these boats i mean you, the personal property tax here in virginia that you're going to have to pay every year on this boat is going to be outrageous so you know you got to save up money to pay your personal property tax to have it registered it, there's it, all it, these things yeah. i mean you know i think it, what it was uh maybe 1200 bucks for a 2021 minivan that's sitting in my driveway, <coughs> half this and 1200 bucks. So you, you look at something like this, you're going to pay easily over $2,000 in personal property tax each year. You know, um, the registration fees, they're, like I said, just the maintenance. Does that thing come with all the batteries that you need and, and everything else? I don't know. I mean, it, it's in, <laughs> it, it's insane, but let's go with the batteries. This thing right here is going to probably take six lithium batteries. You know, even if it's just six, just lead acid, plus the grass, plus the gas, plus the maintenance. It, it, it It's holy crap. This is stupid. And, and then I, I'm not going to just, just really, I want to just touch on the glass, but let's also go to the kayak thing too. You know, Hobie's come out with a new kayak and that thing is still close to $6,000. That's before you put in your Torquedo. A Torquedo is going to retail for about $2,000 probably. Then you have to get that thing put on there. If you, if you want to be competitive forward facing sonar, you're going to put, you know, probably two to 3,000. You're getting close to 10, $15,000 in the kayak. And, and I get it. And then, you know, I got my kayak guys. This is something I want to mention too. I refer this all back to something, and this is a sport that I grew up in. I taught it. I lived in it for 16 plus years as a coach. Plus I played, it was baseball. Baseball never had a salary cap and it got so preposterous where teams had the GDP of Europe, the continent, the Yankees, you know, LA Dodgers over a billion dollars in cap because they never said like, you know what, maybe we should do something here to rein all this stuff in. So it doesn't get crazy football. You have the Packers that are owned by a little peninsula up near freaking Canada. Yeah, they could they couldn't be competitive in baseball with baseball set of rules. No, and I'm how looking much did at that this player just get signed for. Oh, it's a preposterous number. Yeah, it's still preposterous for them. I saw something like he was making, I don't know, like over two thousand dollars an hour. Oh, three hundred and sixty-five days a year. I mean. <laughs> It's crazy. I saw some stat on that. It was like it was on Facebook or something. I saw, you know, they had it broken down. How much you made a year, how much you made, you know, per game, and and broke it all the way down to, you know, like an hour. And it was something like over two hundred two thousand dollars an hour. I mean, Whew. that's ridiculous. It, so it, it is. There's baseball. I mean. The rich teams are going to get rich, I guess, you know? Yeah. And that to me is where I don't know what has to be done. And this is more of me feeling like I'm like being the canary in the coal mine here with the boats getting crazy. The kayaks are getting crazy. There are people posting, they're wearing, they're having six graphs on their boat and everyone's saying the fishing industry is doing great. I was going back and, and just listening to old YouTube videos uh, over the weekend from 2008, 2007, 
when people are saying the fishing industry was doing great. And if you guys remember that live back then, that's when we had the housing crash. Mm -hmm. They're never, no one in the fishing industry or in Congress or in the government is going to be like, guess what? Everything sucks. Everything's tanking. No one's going to say that. And I, I just feel like I'm starting to feel like there's hints and I ask people and everyone's gaslighting like, oh, no, everything's fine. It's like, is it really? Because it feels like the BFLs have gone up in price. Everything's going up and we're getting squeezed as the as the little guy here. And it sucks. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, exactly. As a little guy. And then, you know, I think eventually it's going to hit a wall somewhere. It's going to hit a wall. And people are just going to sit there and say, I- I'm not paying that much money for this stuff. And then you're going to see the fishing industry take a nosedive. I really think that's what's going to happen. Um, it's, I don't know. I, I like to call it a recreational sport um, for everybody. And it still is. But if you you want to expand you want to try more things you want to do different things it's too expensive i mean you know i um who who are the guys um tactical bassin you know they did a a gift guide they were doing a video every day on different things that you could buy and they actually did their com their you know rod and reel combos um and they started, their low end was $100 for a good fishing combo. So, yeah, I mean, as what bothers me is if you have a kid, girl, boy, I don't care, that wants to go fishing and they get an allowance or whatever, whatever they, they've saved up money from birthday cards or whatever and they want to go and and buy a fishing rod now you know you can go to walmart and you can buy a fishing rod the quality of that fishing rod that that kid can buy is not very good it really isn't i mean the closest thing you're going to get is maybe an ugly stick but now even those they're not they're not cheap anymore and then you buy the line. Look at the line prices. How much are how much has fishing line gone up over the past five years? Um, sure, technology's gotten better and things like that, but you, you're 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 going to close off this market to the everyday Joe Blow guy down the street that wants to go fishing, or he wants to take his kids fishing. They can't afford it anymore. It's too expensive. So now you take, I'm quite sure, Thomas, when you were young, you fished, I fished, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old, I was fishing all, every chance I got. But, you know, in in this modern age of, you know, iPhones and video games, you know, a kid can sit there and fish on their video game instead of going outside and throwing a line in the water for real. But if a parent wants to take their kid fishing or an older brother wants to take a younger brother or younger sister fishing, it's too expensive. They can't do it anymore. And this shows you like this boat right here, which is, um, and then again, guys, like I was going to hide the name, but it's really hard with this guy's boat. This is a kayak. This is a Hobie 14, fully decked out. And again, you could be like, it's completely legal and stuff. But I'm saying like to be competitive in a lot of these things, this is where we're going. I'm going to say spitball here with this boat, this kayak. I call it a boat. It's It looks like a boat. You're over 10 grand yep. on that thing with the forward facing center, the lithium batteries, the Torquedo. He's probably got the higher powered Torquedo on there. Um, and, this is the first one that came up. I'm not just picking on him. I could grab somebody else if, if you guys want. It's to me, it's like at some point we're going to need, I, I don't know. Like we're going to price people out of this industry completely. And that's yep. what I'm so worried about right now. Yep. I mean, all the work that you've done and, and the different people you've had on the show. And you can see there's a lot of interest in a lot of different things. 
Mm -hmm. Um, I was actually talking to my wife about you, you know, you had the army Corps engineers and, and you'd had, you've had the different people in the industry, not just to sell fishing lures and stuff, but overall in the industry to make things better. It's I'm afraid it's all for naught because the fishing industry is going to price themselves out. And that's, like I said, they're going to hit a wall and I don't, I don't know how they come back from it. They can't lower the prices anymore. Uh, supply and demand, it drove the prices up. Everything went up. And now I I, I don't know how it's going to happen, but yeah. I, do, Joseph, I do see Joseph, it happening. Joseph has interesting. The problem is the prices won't go down because people will keep buying. They have to keep up with the judges. I, I think that's half of it. The other half of it is I don't think the prices can go down. No. So – and that's what's that's what's scary is if you look at it with anything, whether it's a camper, a truck, a boat, anything in life, prices rarely go down. If prices go down, that means it's such a bad economic collapse. Like you're not worried about a boat anymore. Yeah. I mean, yeah. let's be real. And I guess that's my my question that no one will answer in the fishing industry is if this thing goes bad, it goes south. What happens? And I, I, I don't think people kind of like that answer where I think things are starting to crack here. And I think in the next couple of years, you're going to see this thing completely bottom out um, fishing industry wise. I just don't know what that looks like. I really don't, but I feel like it's coming because a hundred, I can't afford a house. And you guys, my, my wife and I have been trying to shop for a house for about two and a half years. Now we're priced out of the market. We're done. We're just waiting. It's insane right now. The interest rates are too high. There's nothing on the market. And if interest rates go back down, the prices are just going to shoot through the roof again. It's yeah. preposterous. And if you're looking at a truck because you're a landscaper or you need it because you're in construction, you can't buy Jack. I just, how long can we keep this up for? It's so freaking stupid. Um, it, it is, you know, and it's, you know, we, we don't want to go down a certain road, but it is yeah. obviously it's, it's our economy as a whole. Mm-hmm. across the board it's everything um you know just look at you know i can sit there and say at any given time that you know my wife goes to walmart and she walks out with you know three plastic bags from walmart and she just spent you know 70 80 bucks and she walks out of the store with three little bags i don't know i don't know what to do i mean i think um everyone is going to really start feeling the crunch soon and the fishing industry is going to feel it too Mm -hmm. i mean are these sponsors of these big tournaments and everything going to be able to keep it up are all these companies going to be able to continue to donate uh you know and to and to be sponsors for these tournaments and things like that if they price themselves out it's the sponsorships are going away your tournaments are going, everything is just going to fall away because no one is going to be able to afford it. Yeah. I, and, and that, and that's what was like, I liked about kayak fishing a couple of years ago. Um, and I still do, by the way, you know, I mean, if you guys know, I'm gonna make this down, I'm, I'm fishing a full kayak series next year, along with the other thing else I'm doing, but it's the fact that they're falling into the same trap. The bass guys are doing the big boat guys where it's like, it started out cheap and it's escalating and it's going to be coming like, you're going to start pricing people out again. Everyone's trying to price everybody out of the market, which is insane. And, and we got a really good thing by our Mark Parson here. And this is a, this is so true. Uh, it's not just the boats. I want to repower my U Stratus to a four stroke close to 20 K Merc 150. Yep. I, yep. You know, you know something, uh, I'll tell you this. Um, so in the industry that I work in, I, so I used to manage all of the Navy's targets. So when we'd want to qualify a new gun or something, they need something to shoot at. And some of our targets were actually seaborne targets. And, um, you know, we used to have two strokes on board, have, uh, you know, two, two engines, two strokes. It was great. Everyone loved it. Well, all of a sudden couldn't get them anymore. All you can get is four strokes. Mm. And now even, even the Navy has an issue because they can't get the engines for these boats. It's parts, it's backup. It's all these different things and that's another part of it is obviously the the supply chain 
really took a hit during COVID. Everything is still trying to catch up, but it's costing more to move stuff from point A to point B. So, you know, you have these parts that are made, I don't, I don't know, let's say Korea. The cost of getting those parts from Korea to the engine manufacturer, wherever it is in the United States or Canada or wherever, that cost has gone up. So the transportation cost of moving even just parts has gone up along with the gas prices. Mm -hmm. So everything is, is on this upward swing and it continues that way today that I, I think you're absolutely right. I, th I think the industry is going to hit a wall and they're going to price themselves right out of existence because no one can afford to buy this stuff. Yeah, I mean, and I, and I'm I, hoarding fishing tackle now so that I don't have to buy it later. And I, and I don't think the industry does itself any favors. And I think this from a, I get if you're a company, you want your pros to have to be in the best thing. They're the, the, the most relevant thing. But is there something that could happen where you could say, listen, we know it's tight. And because this will be great PR for us, you don't have to run a 2023 Skeeter. You can run a Skeeter and it can be blank years old. I think the fact where you get a lot of these guys that want to buy these perks and they have to have a boat that's two, three years, you know, newish. I mean, even that where it's forcing guys, it's incentivizing guys to go into massive debt. That's insane. Um, you know, kayaking is it, luckily, blessedly, it's not that bad. It's not as bad to do that, but it's still preposterously stupid. Uh, so, and guys, okay, we're going to get through some of these super chats here. Um, this is not just going to be a bleak dour show. We're going to get in some bait things and some fishing right now, too. Um, I, I just, when I saw that, I was like, oh my God, what is happening to, to the sport I love? It's absolutely insane. Um, let's see, we got this one here. Uh, we got. Lonnie, uh, also the price of petroleum is through the roof and it takes petroleum to make a lot of the different product. Yep. A hundred percent, a hundred percent agree. Just yeah. on the gas price front too. I mean, like you can't go very many how, places. Yeah, you think about how much does it cost to fill a boat to run, you know, a weekend tournament. So you take that boat you just saw and you want to run a tournament for a weekend at Gunnersville. How much is it going to cost you in gas just for your boat? Mm -hmm. And what if you don't place? You don't win any money. Nothing. Exactly. <laughs> My wife would shoot me. She'd be like, you know, we could have taken a vacation and rented a house down in Nags Head for a week for the price of gas that you put in that boat to fish a weekend. And that's a great segue into the other topic, which is with the BFLs, the ABAs, and things like that. It's just about clout because you're not going to win money. The no. amount of money you're spending for a BFL, and that's like the hardest thing when I'm looking at the scheduling of what I want to do next year tournament-wise. Uh, I One tournament organization I'm going to fish, uh, and I'll make this announcement later, guys. I'm, probably gonna, I'm going to do a Christmas Eve or Christmas Day stream, so I'll make the announcement to them. But it's like 100 bucks for the whole year, 150 bucks total. And that counts everything. That's interesting and everything. So it breaks down to like $15 per tournament. Super cheap. Go out there and have fun. Or I can fish a BFL where I'm spending $2,000 total with entry fee gas and everything. I can't do that in this economy. I can't do that consistently. It's an, it, it's just preposterous. Yeah. Um, I mean, win the lottery. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and then Shane Flynn said $70 million. And it's like, I agree with you. I don't know the context yeah. of that. But yeah, $70 million, 100%. Um, 700 million 700 million yeah numbers are not yeah. good for me josh evans i know you mentioned kayaks almost every company in the industry and a lot of the dealers are setting in crazy excess inventory for a new for, for of new boats because of the covid boom and the subsequent pullback once it went away it's wild for sure yeah i don't know how they're doing it but it seems like their thought is like we'll make them more expensive because we get a we get a higher percentage of the cut off of that um that's why you don't have a base model truck anymore I literally asked them about, do you have base model trucks? Like they stopped making them because their numbers weren't good. It's better for them to sell one high premium model than it is to do a bunch of base. Well, you know, and, and I'll say this, Thomas, if, if I wanted to turn around and go buy myself a fishing kayak, I would go to Craigslist. I would go to, you know, Used, yeah. any place that I can and find one that's three or four years old. Mm -hmm. because those people bought them 
and during COVID, and then, well, now everyone has to go back to work, blah, blah, blah. They don't have as much time, and they're not using them. So you can find really good buys uh, on, on secondhand kayaks and secondhand, you know, John boats and things like that, where if you just look, you can find them. Um, but to go buy new, I wouldn't buy new. I, I just wouldn't do it. I'd look for, you know, secondhand. So Shane Flint fifty dollars for for gas. And what N- you aren't running a, a full blown shiny bass boat, were you, Shane? That was yeah. in um that was in Gary's boat, I think. His partner Gary that uh he goes fishing down. I think he did that in Lake Ufala. Matthew, why does everyone think they need to fish tournaments? Go fish. I yeah. I think it's because we're men. <laughs> we need to compete. If it wasn't this, we're playing church league softball for a lot of people. Um, I, dude, I, I get it. When I was younger, I fished a lot of tournaments. Now I just fish a lot more for fun, but it's also like, I think a tournament, when you do a tournament, it forces you to go out. It gives you a reason to go out more so than just fish. And I think that's what really pushes a lot of people. Um, uh, Lonnie, a lot of anglers are going to aluminum boats, but even aluminum boat prices are going through there. And that's because the engine size, I, I house money, um, uh, shoot express is owned or not owned, but they're usually powered by Yamaha. Yamaha is not a cheap motor. And nope. if you get one of those with a 250, I think the whole price is in the motor. Yeah. It, oh yeah. The motors are super expensive. Um yeah, I I I, I, I like I said, I would look for if, if you're someone that wants to get in a boat, <laughs> go look secondhand. Um, you know, and then as far as tournaments are concerned. You know, you have the guy in the chat right now that runs these free bass tournaments every year, and he does several of them a year, and that's Shane Flint with yeah. Shane Flint Outdoors. It's something to do. It's 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 a reason to go out there, like you said, to be competitive. But it doesn't cost you anything in Shane's tournament. You just go out and have fun and see what you can do. Um, you know, I mean, Thomas, you, Shane, and I went out, and we – Threw the twenty dollars on the table for longer. All right, let's see who can catch the biggest one. If you want to go and do something like that, fishing for fun, find a partner to go with. I mean, you can drop twenty bucks in the middle of the boat, each of you, and say, "Okay, whoever catches the most wins forty bucks." I mean, I I agree, I agree, and yeah, Shane, yeah, when, when, I know you're a busy man with with your empire, but yeah. Let me know when you're available so I can get you back on the show. We can talk some stuff. Uh, I think this one's funny. Jo- Joseph, um, he's talking about Shane. Uh, I agree with the older dude uh, is saying about Craigslist, uh, but you got to check frequently, have cash in hand. No, 100% on that. You shop around, get through it. And, and then as much as I'm upset about the kayak industry, it's more I'm upset because I just don't want them to fall into the trap. 100%, go get a kayak. You can pimp that out. It is way cheaper. And if you can get a boat, great. I'm blessed. I have a, a 2000, 2001 Ranger. I couldn't afford shit if I bought it new. Like I got to hold on to that thing forever because you I, were, it's paid off. You were at that Veterans Day tournament on Lake Anna. And uh, I was down I didn't see you that day, but <laughs> I sat there and looked at some of those boats and I was like, wow, look yeah. at that thing. I mean, you know, it's almost like when you look at RVs, you know, you have your little, uh, you know, the pocket RV and then you had these giant, freaking bus things that cost as much as if not more than that boat um Mm -hmm. i i I looked at some of those boats and i was like i can't imagine how much that thing cost it's absolutely ridiculous and i know guys we just had everyone jump in chat we have close to 40 people on chat right now uh hey the old guy my name's marty by the way the old guy (laughs) <laughs> no, yeah, it, this is the legend. This is Marty the legend um, coming on here. And just to show this up again, it's it's an icon. Uh, it's close to one. It's over a hundred thousand dollars, close to two hundred thousand dollars. It's absolutely insane. And I had somebody in chat being like, "Well, I got one for um for a little bit less." One hundred percent agree with that. It's just like it's the fact that that's even possible is astonishing to me. And that's kind of what what really brought up today's full conversation so just brought that back up there so people can see real quick before we get into our other stuff because we're talking about the bfls Mm. aba did something very interesting aba decided to come out with a solo league um they're coming out of the solo league in 2024 where you're going to pay a little bit more than the bfls 
you're going to have a chance to win $10,000, but here's the big thing. No co-angler. There's another league. Um, the name escapes me. And if I was actually a really good show host, I've written this stuff down, but I didn't. I was trying to do it from memory. That's also getting away with the co-angler. The BFLs have increased their price for the co-angler and the boater. If I had a $200,000 icon, I don't know if I want a guy in the back with Spike It dumping the die on my boat, maybe he weighs 600 pounds, stepping on my deck, cracking it. I might just pay for a league where I don't have to deal with a co-angler. And I am very curious if this is going to be the death of the co-angler in the next couple of years because it's just a convenience thing. And the analogy I made, and it's probably a bad one, is when you go to a dealership and you have something that has to always stand around when you're looking at vehicles. Yeah, because I just did this. And they said, like, well, it's policy. We have to be here. And it's like, well, could I just pay for you not to be here so I can just shop? Sometimes you just want to go fishing and you just don't want to have to deal with somebody. It's not about cheating, which is always comes up. Like, oh, that's so you can cheat. No, it's just because I had a guy break a rod, rod locker on mine. You know, he was close to 700 pounds and he jumped on the back of the boat and he cracked a lid. And I've had somebody spill dye on the back. I've had someone try to smoke weed during a tournament. Um, it Sometimes it's like, oh, man, if I could just pay a little extra to deal with them. I really think in the next five to six years, you're going to see co-anglers completely done away with. Because if you're willing to pay $200,000 for a bass boat and all these electronics, why wouldn't you be willing to pay a little bit more of a fee not to have your co-angler? And if the BFLs pick that up, it's Dunsky. There will be no more co-anglers. And that's just my hot take for the night. <laughs> well, that you know, and I, I can say on my little boat, there are times that I like to have someone with me. And other times I like to just be on my own. And, you know, and that, that goes for really everything. I mean, unless you're just uh, one of the type of people that you really just want to have someone with you all the time for safety reasons or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. um, there are days that I just like to go out on the water by myself. Do my own thing. Because 100%. when I have someone with me, usually I have to put them up front. And then the majority of the time that I'm fishing, I'm concentrating on where they are so that they can make cast to where the fish would be. Okay. It's just the way I am. Yeah. Um, I agree. And, I, and I'm not trying to say right or wrong the you know, the death of the co-angler. I'm just saying like, this is where it's going, where the pros already don't have co-anglers and it's going to trickle down. And I've heard people rumor it. And if they had to pay a little bit extra, they'd be okay with it. If you want to make content, I know Shane makes some content. If you could put up two or three cameras in the back and not have to worry about your co-angler hooking your camera, that's good business. <laughs> um, Shane that's is going to comment I did that. on that one. I did that. Yep. <laughs> uh, Shane, sometimes my guest angler throws my GoPro in the lake, Marty. <laughs> uh, uh, we got Lonnie here. Uh, I'm sure eventually the co-angler will be eliminated. They used to be in the elite's a hundred buck a hundred elite hundred back in 2007 yeah and the price keeps going up on them and that's to me it's like why would you want to pay six seven hundred bucks just to sit in the back of somebody's boat and, and that and then again all those guys are going to become kayak fishermen is what's going to end up happening i just think it's so interesting where this industry is going and then we got our mark parson in here with a really good one here so if you buy the icon and pay a 20 year note on that sucker you have paid close to you paid over 300 grand for that boat question mark guys again i know we had a couple more pump, pump people in uh yeah that boat right there i know that that thumbnail's not lying it's not photoshop that boat is close to two hundred thousand dollars ladies and gentlemen we have arrived in just the dystopian future that's a thing that's happening um and lonnie i know you're one of my river rats that are in here isn't the rock proof boat and the raptor rock proof jet boat those are close to two hundred thousand dollars or they're just a hundred thousand dollars fully rigged out and that that motor is insane i think it's like over a hundred horsepower uh, like a hundred uh yeah it's a hundred horsepower i think on that bad boy but you can let me know in the comment section wow um yep so that's the uh that, that that's the that's the drama right now i got that off my chest uh if you guys ever want to in the future want me to vent about this stuff go back to this episode it's done we can get some more of the fun <laughs> stuff of fishing we've had um, enough yeah because i want to get to some baits and stuff but uh lonnie said lonnie said yes upwards of 80k topped out that's insane for a jet boat good god <laughs> Um, 
Marty, what are you even what are you even getting up to? I know that you've been really affiliated with Monster Bass, and you had back in the fall, you had a big turnout at one of the the major uh, vendors out here, right in Virginia. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we we help sponsor the veterans tournament there at Lake Anna. Um, that was really good, and then that was we awesome. also did the uh, the Fallen Outdoors. Uh, we sponsored them and the big event down there at Bass Pro Shops. I forget even what month that was in. Um, but we were there for that. And what what I've done in in association with Monster Bass is we've set up this Monster Bass Cares. Because what we discovered were people were donating money to support veterans events through Monster Bass through uh, Super Chat with money. And Monster Bass was getting like six bucks out of a $20 donation. So we figured out a different way to do it. We actually have a Venmo code set up that people can donate money. It goes directly into that account separately. And then what I do is I purchase stuff at cost through Monster Bass and I send it to support veteran organizations and first responder tournaments. So I mean, we've probably donated easily over three thousand dollars in just Damn. four four events this past year. So, for all your listeners out there, if there's anyone out there that does veterans tournaments or uh, first responder tournaments, things like that, um, please reach out to me. Um, you can you can find me on YouTube, or you can. I'll tell you right now, my email address is Marty Lawson 1982 at Gmail. Uh, if you're affiliated with any veterans tournaments, first responder tournaments, please reach out to me. Um, we're we're definitely looking to support more of that. Um, so that's that's what I do a lot. I talk to a lot of different people all around the country. We did we supported a tournament in Oregon, one in Georgia, one in South Carolina. Um, one in Ohio, and then the one here in Virginia, the Monster ba uh, the uh, Veterans Tournament. So we're still growing. We're still gathering funds and 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 being able to do this. And um, it's really it's a lot of fun, and I enjoy it. I don't get paid for it. It's completely volunteer. So um, you know, I'm always looking for help. If you want to help me out with this and, and help me research some of these organizations, you know, they don't have to be whatever that is, the one C, four C or whatever they that <laughs> uh, tax exempt organizations. I don't have to do anything like that. It can be a small veteran kayak fishing tournament or something like that. You know, just let me know, because uh, we definitely like to support this type of stuff and whether it be equipment. You know, we can do boxes, we can do rods, we can do, you know, just tackle, we can do uh, uh, gift cards, you know, we can do all kinds of things. So the, the floor is open for me to, to support how I want to do it. And uh, they trust me with that, which is kind of scary in itself, but. Yeah. No, <laughs> you, you are the man, like you doing this was is such a good fit. It really is. Well, I, I like it. Um, I have, uh, we're, we're really trying to work with the Fallen Outdoors and the Virginia chapter, and then we want to expand to the the Mid Atlantic, and then you know the entire Atlantic Seaboard, and then work our way across, um, supporting more and more. Um, obviously, Monster Bass, you know, eventually they want to become, you know, maybe major sponsors for these tournaments. So we have to start somewhere, and that's where I come in. I'm starting somewhere. Um, you know, I will say uh, uh, Monster Bass is coming out with their own baits, um, you know, which is which is a lot of fun. It's a lot of That's good things. Cool. I get I get all kinds of neat little things in the mail. You know, they're coming out with their own, own crank baits and spinner baits, and they're starting a little bit in the soft plastics, not a whole lot. But um, they're, they're trying some new things. And, I'm you know, hey, if it works, it works. And uh they they give me they give me stuff to go out and try so you know that's what I do. I, I oh, and we're gonna 
I we're gonna be getting into that. Believe that. We're gonna be getting into that. Uh we got we got a couple more super chats. All right. A couple more chats we gotta get through here before we get into the to his wall. I call it Marty's wall. It's 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 quite amazing. Uh let's see what right here. Oh no, we already did that one. Uh-huh. Here we go. Uh Best Buddy and I just waited the Rafa Hannock and Remington yesterday. Each of us caught a dozen shiners, not the best fighters, but fun. Dude, that sounds like absolutely fun. <laughs> um uh, let's see. Shane's like, I do like fishing team tournaments. Uh, yeah, team tournaments are an absolute blast. Uh, let's see. We got a couple more chats here. Let's see. Uh, Ryan, uh, have been a bank bank angler all my life. Any chance I've had to fish from a boat has been incredible. Really hope the co angler doesn't go extinct. Hope fish. Uh, hope to fish a tournament as a co angler next year. Now, I, I'm not hoping. And it's more of like just predicting, like the market. Like if the market's going down, I got to just say like the market's going down. Like it, it's not about wanting it, but it's just reading the tea leaves. I think what the, now now what I mean by that though let me clarify this is at the highest level I think your grassroots stuff uh, New Horizon bass anglers um, different groups like that it, they're gonna have co angler or you can hop on that do I think the Toyota series or the BFLs are gonna have it I don't know I, I don't know about that we got Brandon here Brandon says. <laughs> Tom shits on the fishing industry. No way you're going to get the, get sponsors. Well, here's the thing. I am not a shill, and I'm not a professional angler. I'm a news station, and that is why my Patreon is so important. If I get funded by you people, I get to be more loyal. I will not be decked out in Berkeley saying Berkeley is the only bait company that exists. And so I can actually go in there and actually have conversations with the different people in the industries and just hit on these notes. So really the reason I'm able to just say things the way they are is because of you guys, Patreon supporters and, and Jake Spate and tackle and people like that who are non endemic to the industry. Um, because yeah, I, I do get kind of annoyed with that when you have people in the industry saying everything's fine and they're sponsored by the industry to say that it's fine. <laughs> hey, I, I tell you, speaking on this, just before we started the show, um, I don't know how many folks are, fill, are, are, you know, familiar with aggressively average anglers. Uh, they're two guys that do, you know, YouTube videos and TikTok and shorts and, and Instagram. Uh, they just put out a video today that says they're not going to be sponsored by anyone anymore. <laughs> because what they're finding out is with the industry... A lot of other companies are jumping on board to say, hey, I'll give you, you know, I'll give you a hundred bucks if you throw this commercial in the middle of your video. Mm -hmm. So what they found out is a lot of people are doing that. And they feel like, look, we don't want to have to be loyal to one company. You know, now there are some guys out there that are, they're sponsored by, I don't know, whoever. And they use their rods and their lures and their product and everything else. And they're completely loyal to that. That's one thing. But now they're finding out that, you know, as they're doing their videos and they have quite a large, large following that these sponsors are coming in saying, Hey, you know, it's, they said it's changing the dynamic of YouTube videos and, you know, actually being able to teach people things because a lot of guys are going to turn around and say, oh, wait a minute, I can put this two minute commercial in the middle of my video and they're going to give me a hundred bucks. They they feel it's going to detract from the quality of the videos that people are being able to put out along with sponsors. You know, there's, and I can say it, Monster Bass, (laughs) Monster Bass, um, You know, if you want to be uh, an affiliate with them, you know, you have to do X number of videos for Monster Bass a week and and all these things. And it becomes more of a burden than just having fun doing videos and, and, you know, letting people see different products and things like that. Um, You know, I you know, Shane just put out a good video about let it let it let's getting back to to just having fun um you know for you thomas you're like i said the quality of what you put out is not just guys coming on spouting about their product okay you're going and you're talking to the people that influence 
our bodies of water in our local areas. Okay, whether it be, like I said, the Army Corps of Engineers and, and all these different people that you're bringing on the show makes it totally different than, you know, a lot of guys that do YouTube videos that are sponsored by, you know, one particular brand and that's all they talk about. Um, you know, if, if it comes to that, I, I don't think I'd want to do videos anymore. And I, I don't have a lot out there, but I'm going to be doing some more. Um, but I just want to put out product. I want to show, Hey, this is how you can get a deal on this. And Hey, this is, this is a good tool for tying a knot and these things you can get here. And, you know, just, I want to make it easy so that people can continue to have fun fishing, you know? Yeah. I, 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 so I had a story where someone wanted to come on to sponsor the show, but they didn't want me to talk about it. It was, a. Uh, it was like an episode, like a hundred and fifty ish area, but it was like I was talking about um, the wake boat issue on a lot of our lakes, and I was trying to get people on to talk about the erosion factor and all this other stuff and safety, and they said like they couldn't come on as a sponsor because I was going to talk about that stuff because mm. there's a lot of money in the people that run those wake boats, and they didn't want to kind of cross paths with them, yeah. and also about the canoers, or not the canoers, whatever those people are that do the big rowboats uh, competitively. Oh yeah, yeah, the um, skulls. The skulls. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, it's just uncomfortable with that stuff. And that's the problem is when you start taking money, they start controlling you. And it's, it's hard to find people that just want to just hop on board because of your brand. And I'm more of a news outlet. And it's like, I don't want to become like what a lot of news has an issue with <laughs> nowadays. Uh, and you just want to report it and ask and be a hard hitting journalist. And that's kind of hard because everyone it wants is, to put opinion I mean, in stuff. You know, there's, a, there's a, there, so Sometimes you give your opinion on things, but then you open yeah. it up for discussion. Yeah. You know, uh, um, a, a good news outlet is going to present the facts, which is what you've done. Um, Thank you. Granted, we we all have opinions about everything. Oh, you yeah. Know? Yeah. You know that saying, everyone has an opinion, like everyone mm -hmm. has something else. But um, the the fact that you're having the different people in the entire industry come on board and and talk about issues that's the big thing now you know it's it's not um it's your show is not all opinion driven um you like to get opinions and sometimes you give opinions but like i said you open it up for discussion to talk about these things which is great um you did that that ford facing sonar video and Man, that was some discussion there. I mean, that, that was that just was crazy. But it's great that you just you just throw that out there like, hey, we're going to talk about this today. And you didn't have an opinion on it. You opened it up for everyone else to give their opinions on it, what their thoughts were on it, which is exactly what you're doing today, talking about the thoughts on what people are talking about, the price of boats, the price of kayaks co-angling and all these different things you know all the all the different people that listen to your show and watch your show and re-watch when you when you post it later you know are going to provide comments that you can go back in a later episode and talk about again and and bring more things to light because you're going to find these things in the comments talking to people that i, I just think you're going to be able to continue to you know you might three months down the road talk about this topic again and say hey marty lawson said this whole thing was going to hit the wall and guess what it did um locals have more knowledge than people think and that's the one thing i've seen in this industry where i like people and like i like hearing people's stories and what's so funny is in the fishing industry people only care about like the one percent the famous people and you can learn so much from like the guy that lives at philpot or the local bait maker in Fredericksburg or, or Shane Flint and his like, you know, kick-ass electrical boat, you know, everyone's got a story and, and got so much information to put. But I think in the fishing industry, we decide like, no, it's just these 10 people. They're it. They are knowledgeable. I am not saying they're not, but there's also a lot of other knowledge out there that people kind of gloss over, which is quite sad. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, you know, I'm I'm in a championship, Shane. I mean, Shane puts out great videos, and 100. percent the The thing is, is you know, and I, Shane and I talk quite frequently. And, you know, I said one time I said to him, "Hey, Shane, 
your videos are great, but tell us what you're using and how you're using it. And he mm -hmm. kind of changed that up. And man, I'll tell you what, he, he does a video, he catches fish, and then he tells you about what he's using and how he's using it. So it's not just a fishing video. It's more of a teaching video, which I think is fantastic. Um, that's what I, I really love Shane watching Shane's videos. Um, he's, he's always trying to teach something. Um, you yourself and these podcasts and, and the things that you do, you're just trying to make people smart. You're, you're not trying to drive an opinion home on anything. You're just trying to make people more smart in our local area um, so that they can go out and one, have a good time and, and, and just learn. And nobody I should just, be afraid to ask a question. Yeah. And that's the thing is like, I like asking questions and it's so fa like, uh, you know, we, I, something I want to do this year is kind of like the top interviews I've had with like people, I, I rephrase that the people I've interviewed and one was just talking to Halliker about the smallmouth fish hatchery. And I just didn't appreciate how much money and time a biologist puts in to go from a fish egg to a smallmouth that gets put in the river. And we bitch so much as anglers and as humans of like, why is this not better? And then you realize it took them $80,000 and half a year of work to raise this big of a creature that we put into the water. And, and we don't appreciate it. Like when you're a little kid and you complain to your mom, you don't realize everything that she did that day just to do what she did for you. And, and, and it's like, it just, it put it all in consideration. Like, Holy shit, that's a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> and, but no one's ever asked those questions. And it's just, it is fascinating to me in the industry. Like people won't ask. And then, I'm going to put this out to the chat. If you knew someone that will come on and talk about engine prices or fiberglass boat prices, I would love to have them on. Whether they think the industry is great or they think it's bad. Yeah. Just send them my way. You guys giving me like, people to talk to and referrals is really just, just how it is. Um, Marty's got a big wall here and I don't want to be up all night with Marty. Um, massive, massive wall. And while he's showing it off and we get through these questions here, uh, fishing DMV is the most informative fishing show in DMV hands down. God bless you, sir. He's not on the payroll. He's going to make me tear up a little bit. Uh, we got another one right here. Judah. Uh, it's nice to have someone unbiased to companies, a uh, big fan of fishing in DMV guys. Thank you so much again. Yeah. That's what I really try to do is just try to be unbiased and just have good conversations about our area. Um, what do you got for us first, Marty? All right. So look, you know, Christmas time and it, might be kind of a little late now to, to jump on these things, but you know, um, obviously with all this tackle behind me, I need something to put it in. Um, you know, the, the sales that Amazon has on, you know, the good old- Oh, I love that box. Oh. Right? You gotta yeah. love that. <laughs> um, but something else that I showed is, I don't know where the heck I put the other one, but look, these little things here um for the bass or, or for even whether you're wading the shorelines or in a kayak or something like that a small boat even your big boats you know little things like this um they're great you open it up you have tons of pockets little carrying places look at that, that is can, so freaking cool dude i, can I like that a lot this. And each of these little uh, doors is spring loaded, so they open up um, and they're great. They're waterproof. They got the gasket in there. You close it up, you know. Um, these things right here. I don't know why I keep doing this with my camera. I'm getting as bad as you, Thomas. But look, <laughs> That's these things too. here. <laughs> guess where I got these? Thomas, where? you know. Go ahead and say it. Where'd I get them? Monster Bass. Oh, Tackle Timu. Warehouse. Timu. Timu. <laughs> Timu. This thing cost me under five bucks. I mean, and here's the thing. I showed this earlier. This is a Spro, okay? It's the exact same thing. I, I want to put that in chat. What is Timu called? How do you spell that so I can put that word in chat? T-E-M-U. T-E-M-U. Yeah. All right. So this is a Spro. Uh, I got all my lead weights in there, all right? The, the clasp, the clasp is exactly the same. That's Look, crazy. It's identical. 
the size is the same. This Spro one cost me like, I don't know, 12, 14 bucks, something like that. This same thing on Timu cost me under five bucks. So, you know, why I, I bought some of the Timu lures and I tell you, they're crap. <laughs> um, they're not very good at all. So I wouldn't go off and jump on Timu and, and buy a bunch of lures. But look at look at their tackle storage. Uh, they actually have some really good um, sling backpacks for the shore angler. Um, they got stuff like that that is really cheap and it, and it's good. I mean, it's the exact same thing. You know, like I said, there's the expensive one. There's a cheaper one. It's not as pretty, not as fancy. Doesn't have a name on it, but. It's the exact same thing, okay? So, whatever. This is, uh, what I say? 10, 12, 14 bucks, five bucks. So, don't be afraid to use term Timu to go out and get some of your tackle storage, okay? So, that's the first thing I got for you. Uh, second thing, you ready? Yeah. Thomas says, oh, you finally got one. This is an yeah! FG. <laughs> FG not tire. Um, I tell you what, this thing is awesome, and it's it's really good for um, tying uh, fluoro to braid for your leaders. Um, this is great. Now I tell you something that I found out. This is a manual one. This is an electric one. The problem I have is the electric one. It, I, I would say it would be great if you're a guy that likes to use thicker line, um, <laughs> you know, like maybe a 20 pound fluoro vice the eight and 10 pound that I use, because I found out when using this one, these clips in here that hold your line tight do not hold that thinner diameter line very good. It just continues to slip out and you can't get a tight knot. So um, some folks that use a heavier line, this electric one is great, super easy to tie FG knot. But if you use a lighter line like me, go, go with this one. It's, uh, you can still tie a great knot with this. I have yet to have a knot fail using this tool and use a smaller diameter line. So there's a little hint for anyone out there that's thinking about buying an FG knot tool. Um, you know, it's up to you, but I favor this one. And how much is it, both of them? Oh, shoot. Um, this one was, I think about 13, 14 bucks, Tackle Warehouse. Um, and then this one was a little more. This one was... I don't know, like 15, 16 bucks. It was a little more. Um, the problem, the other problem is, thank God for YouTube, because if there were not videos on how to do this, uh, the instructions are in Japanese or Chinese. I don't know the difference between the written languages. And I could not understand them. So I immediately went to YouTube to see how to use these things. So, um, yeah. You can figure out you, there are some great videos on how to use these tools on YouTube. So if you get them, sit down and watch those videos. And the other thing is, uh, obviously with YouTube, you can pause at any time. So mm -hmm. some people talk a little fast. Um, I probably, when I first got this and first tried to tie that knot, I tell you that pause button was a wonderful thing on YouTube because I could stop and just go step by step and it made it a lot easier. So now I can do this uh, pretty much with my eyes closed. It's great. Okay. Um, Judah, uh, if it works, there's nothing wrong with cheap. I bought a Mega Bass 110 plus two blank for $1.89, caught a seven plus pound bass on it. So that like, it truly, I truly believe it's finding alternatives. Judah, you just want a gift card at Jake's Bait and Tackle. Uh, <laughs> congratulations. Please message me. Um, please message me on Facebook, Instagram, or you can email me fishing, fishing the DMV at gmail.com to claim your gift card to Jake's Bait and Tackle. Thank you so much. 
Continue. Good okay, sir. cool. Uh, so, um, I got that great guy named Shane Flint who really turned me on to uh, fishing high-tech swim baits. Okay? And, you know, we had several discussions about the proper jig head to use and <coughs> and things like that and even his buddy gary we chimed in and we were talking back and forth about you know what jig heads to use um i'm not exactly sure what ones shane used uh but i did find the one that i like the most is uh this is put out by z-man this is a z-man jig head uh, see if i can get the camera to focus on that instead of me put your hand behind it yep, there, there you go, go. It has a real small wire keeper on there. Um, and I, I will still use a dab of super glue with the Kitech because the Kitech baits are soft and they will tear yeah. pretty quick. Um, so, yeah, Kitech swim baits with this jig head, I, I, I really do like it. Um, so that's, that's a Z-Man. Um, I can't remember the name of it. Um, <clears throat> And then if, if you want something a little bigger, you can go with something like um, <coughs> Six Cents has these. Um, but I did find that uh, the Kitech will slip down after, you know, one or two fish. So, but if you're using something else, um, this is a real good jig head. And I like, I like the shape on the bottom because it tends to ride over stuff a lot easier than getting hung up with just, you know, say a, a, a standard ball jig or something like that. Um, I, I also do like the 90 degree line turn, line tie. Um, that really seems to help. And then of course, you know, I think the new rage out there is, um, what do they call it? Um, glide, what is it called? Hover rig. Um, what is it called? The hover rig? Yeah, the hover Strolling. Rig. The hover rig. Uh, really looking forward to trying that this year. You know, this is our core tackle puts these out. Um, I really want to try that this year. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Hover rig. Yep. Um, they also called it something else, but you know that they're, they're talking about. Um, that's a great bait for forward facing sonar. So yeah. for you forward facing sonar guys like Shane, definitely. Uh, Maybe you need to go out and try that. Um, but, you know, the tackle wall behind me, I'm constantly finding new things. And I found this. Um, it's a brand new bait from Sixth Sense. <clears throat> and this here is called the Panorama. And I'm not sure how many people have actually seen this thing. Um, but that's pretty cool. That's it right there. They kind of, you can see the colors on that. And they're extremely full of action. I mean, it, it's like I'm holding a, a live fish in my hand, right? Mm -hmm. um, but what folks are doing is rigging it flat like this uh, with an EWG hook. And this thing just kind of floats down and you can dart it. And the tail has a ton of action. So... I'm really looking forward to trying these um, this coming this coming year. Um, but that's about all I got for new stuff that that I have going on. Obviously, you know, I'm still collecting a lot of tackle. I like to find new things and throw them up on my wall, and then decide whether or not I'm going to use them or just sell them again or whatever. But um, the other thing coming up for us in the local area, there's the uh, the Eagles Club uh, fishing flea market down here in the Fredericksburg area. Um, and then, of course, there's the big uh, fishing show down in Richmond in January also. Um, I'm not sure the exact dates. Uh, quite sure, Thomas, you can find the dates on those and throw them up on your... Uh, I would get in trouble if I didn't know these since I'm supposed to be there. So uh, Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so yeah, so guys, the Richmond Fiction Expo is um the eight is the uh the nineteenth. Sorry about that. I had to look at the right calendar there. Is the nineteenth through the twenty first. Uh Fishing and DMV has its own booth again at 
uh, the Richmond Fishing Expo. We will be live streaming the event again, getting you guys all the good interviews, going from booth to booth. And what we're going to try to do this year, knock on wood, we are going to try to live stream the Casting Kids final competition. We're going to try to do that a little bit better than we did last year. And then we're also, if the TBF guys are going to be willing, we're going to pick two of them to have a trout fish off at the end on Sunday. <laughs> two of those guys around the trout pond to have a fish off. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm going to try to make a couple more expos. I've had so many people, and I, this is a blessing, I get it, trying to have me go to different expos, but I can't go to the Susquehanna Fishing Show in PA and then Richmond and then to Dale City and then to Eagle. It's just like, I'm dude, I'm going to get burnt out. So I'm going to try to pick and choose uh, to make sure I have at least one weekend off each month, hopefully, as we get closer and closer to fishing season. Um uh, Marty, I really can't thank you enough for coming on here and everything that you're doing in the industry for local bait makers, um, you know, for Monster Bass, for all of our veterans. I mean, uh, you are the right person to be in charge of that in the right area of the country to be doing that in. Yeah, I appreciate it. And, you know, like I said, I didn't get to fish a whole lot this year uh, with the wife's medical issues, but I'll be hitting it again come the spring. And, uh, you know, Please check out Shane Flynn Outdoors. He does he does some great videos out there uh, in our local area here in Fredericksburg. And if you're ever down this way, give me a shout. Uh, Marty Lawson, 1982 at Gmail. Just send me an email if you're going to be down this way. I'd be more than happy to have someone sitting in front of my boat so I can drive them around and let them catch fish while I drive. So, you know, anytime, <laughs> um anytime. I'll be the backseater. I'll be the driver and the net man. You fish. All right. And, and right again, on, right uh, and again, buddy, uh, Thomas, anytime you want to come down, I'm sure, you know, Shane and I would love to host you again. That was a great Shane, time. Yep. Marty, I definitely want to come back down again when the weather warms up. Uh, Shane, I definitely want to get some stuff done with you. I'm trying to get Shane to fish the Occoquan Reservoir uh, tournaments on Sunday with me, uh, but I know he's a busy man, and I'm going to get Shane back on the show here at some point too. Uh, our Mark Parson, the last question that came in, any thoughts on the new VMC uh, swinging Ned Rig head uh, or Ned Rig jig? You know what? I have not fished that, but... Uh, I haven't uh, fished. I've seen it. But um, if you're really a Ned Rig fisherman, um, a swinging Ned Rig jig just does not do what a Ned Rig is supposed to do to me. Um, I, I, I can think of using that same uh, Ned Rig with the swinging head more to use as a uh, maybe a small shaky head but um yeah i don't know i don't know what that would oh. do to a ned rig i mean a ned rig stands on the bottom you know um i understand when paired with a z-man it stands up but is that head not just going to fall over and lay on the bottom where a standard ned rig is solid and that mushroom head on that jig is what helps it stand up. I'm, I'm thinking that, that might make it fall over. So maybe if you go to, a, maybe you go to, you know, uh, one of the bigger Z-Man, um, you know, I, I forget what they are. They're, they're no, bigger I than their standard TRDs. Um, I think they're maybe maybe three or three and a half inch uh, type stick bait with still the elastic in it. Maybe you fish it like a shaky head, but I don't think it has an application as a Ned Rig. That's just my so, opinion. Yeah, it, it, let's break that down a little bit. So the one thing I've always hated about Z-Man hooks, generally speaking, is the hook, I'm sorry, the, the weight style on the thing. So if you look at this thing again, um, this one right here, if you look at this thing, this bullet shape, what that is really good at is getting stuck and you losing it. And then you pay Z-Man for another thing. I, I well, like the hooks, <laughs> the, uh, or I'm that's sorry, the BMC, BMC. but, but yeah. Z-Man does the same thing. Um, I guess it's the Ned Rig style head, honestly, that, that flat shape, this pointed head here. Um, it's great at getting stuck. And when you're fishing a Ned Rig on like the Shenandoah river, the upper Potomac, all those heads get stuck. And unless you're like Jeff green of shallow water fishing adventure, someone that he just makes his own jig heads so cheap he can lose a thousand of them 
I think you should go with a ball head style jig, something like that. If you're talking about just the snag purposes, there's better heads on the market that are gonna actually come through the cover a little bit better. Now let's let's break apart the swinging head factor. If you wanna do a swing head, you can go to Tackle Warehouse or Jake's Bait and Tackle if you wanna support the show, uh, and you can get a, a Biffle Bug style head that will give you the swinging motion, but you probably get it more a football style. So if you're fishing a lake, a football style swing head or will go through stuff way better than that pointed arrowhead, generally speaking. Now, I do hate a lot of these heads for a lot of practical purposes. However, the hooks on these Nedberg heads are so st sticky sharp, they're fantastic for Damiki rigs, believe it or not, because it yeah. does not take much pressure for you to pull up on them and, and stick them. Um, you got something to show off to the camera there? Yeah. This is my favorite smallmouth bait right here. Oof, that's good. Do I got one of those? <laughs> Now this here is it's it's actually um, they actually make it weedless and I like to cut those wires off, um, but I think the difference in in honestly where I fish Thomas compared to the slower stretchers of the Shenandoah and things like that, you know I'm fishing in a lot of current, so this bait is bouncing along the bottom, it's not just dropping and sitting in one spot. So I, I really have to pay attention and pair this with a Z-Man bait for that flotation so that when this bait is going through the current, it's just bouncing. If I was using a bait that wasn't Z-Man, that didn't have that flotation that the Z-Man craws have, at using that same bait, I'd probably get hung up all the time. But I use this bait, I bounce it along the bottom, in the in the more swift current um using that z-man cross and and it it's very effective so you know but that's that's as that's a z-man um what they call it the shroom micro finesse jig right really there. good jig really good jig yep. um and this gets up, uh, but I got one last, we're got one more question uh, to get to but before we do. Um, thanks. That's good info from our Mark Parson. Uh, Mark, if you're still listening to the show, you just want a gift card to Jake's bait and tackle. Um, you just want a gift card to Jake's bait and tackle. Please message me on Instagram, Facebook, or you can email me at fishing the DMV at gmail.com. And I'll get you your gift card uh, later this week. Uh, the last question of the night, hopefully to get to is we're getting right back up to, uh, 40 people watching in December, which is insane. Uh, what about the new, uh, I hate this name and you guys know I'm terrible at names. To begin with P Panorama. Panera Panorama. I always want to say Panera for some reason, uh, Panorama <laughs> by six cents. Uh, they sold out like crazy. Are they even worth the hype? What are your um, thoughts about that? <laughs> My thoughts is I can't wait to fish this thing. Um, I am, I am jacked about this thing. Okay. Um, so I got the smaller sizes, okay? So this is a three and a half, and this is a two. I love that color, though. Damn, that looks good, though. Oh, uh, okay. And the thing is, is um, I think they got them up to six and a half, maybe seven inches. I mean, got some that are really big. Um, and they're talking, you know, using a seven hook on those things. Obviously, I'm not using a seven odd hook on these little guys, but I tell you what. This little thing right here, look yeah. at that. I mean, and, and probably what I'm going to do is something that some guy named Jared told me about, you know, that guy, Jared. I think when I go to fish this right here along this bottom, I'm going to take a little red Sharpie and I'm going to put mm -hmm. a little bit of red right there because a dying shiner for some reason they turn red at the bottom so i'm going to try that with this thing and like i said you fish it sideways you can see that profile right there it it looks like i'm holding a dead minnow in my hand um but this thing the the action on it is unreal and yeah i'm going to be buying more of them because i think i'm going to be ripping through these things I, and, I yeah. you know, they have some that are that are kind of a, a more in a bluegill pattern. And I'm thinking possibly when the bass are on the beds in the spring, that if you take one of these things and throw it in there that has that bluegill pattern over by a bed, 
those bass are going to smack the crap out of it. But and, that remains to be his... seen, and yeah. and I'd be more than happy to, uh, you know, show these things off and see what I can do with them. <laughs> I think a lot of times Jared and uh, Jenny from Jake's Bait and Tackle, when I went to iCast, said something that was really um, profound. Baits and the bait companies are meant to catch fishermen, not fish necessarily. And it is hard when you get all these new baits, what will work, what won't. And it's funny because like there are so many fancy Demiki rig baits you can get that look so good. And you know my favorite Demiki rig bait right now for where I live in the country? It's a TRD turd. Yeah. It's a little Ned rig bait. It lo- it's it's not super realistic or whatever, but it works. I think these baits here, they will work the best. And I think this is with any baits that look realistic. Now, I hope everyone pay attention here. This is something like from California fishing, Japanese fishing. The higher pressured the fish, the more realistic baits will work, period. If you are asking, Tom, will this work in my local pond? It probably will, but you probably don't need this in your local pond to get bit. If you are fishing, uh, I don't know, like hunting run when it's getting pounded to snot, yeah, that might get a couple extra bites. I just think it's really dependent. Um, but, the, I mean, they are beautiful baits. I would have this definitely as a Demiki rig bait, a fall bait, and I'd have a couple of baits tied on because that might be one that gets a couple extra bites. But it, it's hard with baits like that that look realistic. It's such a unique circumstance where I think that pays off because guess what? If that water's muddy, that kind of bait doesn't really matter. They can't see it for shit. They're not going to no, see the details. And, and you know where, where we fish down here, that water is yeah. so clear most of the time. Yeah. Um, I'm actually looking at taking this and nose hooking it for a drop shot also. So, That'd be you know, I, I, I'm thinking the real small ones would be real good for a drop shot. The other ones, you know, just kind of look like a dying bait fish. Um, maybe you know closer to the fall when those bait balls are moving around and the bass are underneath them if you take something like this weightless and let it drop down through that bait ball um it's just going to look like a dying shag coming out of that bait ball easy meal for those bass so you know i'm jacked about trying them i'll I'll definitely give a review (laughs) um you know um that's 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 what I'm going to do. I really want to try these things and see what they do. Um, there's one thing that I will tell you that I probably will not fish. And I actually won a, a six cents, um, it was a garage, garage sack, something or other, but it's this thing. Oh, now see, I knew Thomas's eyes lit up when he saw yeah. that. He's like, Oh yeah, pretty- I, there's a swim bait. I'll fish that thing. I got one of those. Yeah. Um, you know, I honestly, I don't have the tackle to throw this. I'm more of a finesse guy. But, uh, you know, Thomas, it's sitting right here in my fishing room. You know, I'm coming. I'm Any, coming. Anytime you want to come down, <laughs> it'll be here. I'm, I'm going to be crashing at your, uh, you and Shane's place this coming year. This coming year, I'm going to be a lot on the road. Um, and that kind of segues into the next thing. So what's the plan going forward for the next couple of weeks here? Uh, because we hit uh, 60 people on Patreon and we're more than halfway to our first uh, major goal, we have a special uh, interview uh, that's lined up at Jake's Bait and Tackle with two local river rats. They're a little bit older gentlemen. They don't have social media or computers, so we have to do an in-person interview. These guys are an absolute wealth of freaking knowledge, and I'm going to be interviewing them. Tomorrow night, we have a Patreon-only member interview with Jeff Green talking about winter fishing, boats, and all the tackle. So if you want to be a part of that interview, just go to Patreon, uh, my Patreon page. You can sign up. I'm going to be doing a bunch of those. I have a blade bait seminar coming out this year. And then also, Christmas Eve, whenever Monday is, I completely forget. Yeah, that's I'm going to let my Patreon day. members decide this, but it's going to be, <clears throat> where are we at here? Because I had the calendar, I was supposed to give this out. Okay, Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, I'm going to do a live stream because my wife works both days. That's just what we've always done, so it's just a work day for me. Um, Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, we're going to do an interview. I'm going to be talking about blade baits, spy baits, winter fishing, and also I'm going to be talking about the schedules going forward, what we're going to be doing. We've got the Richmond Expo. we got so much stuff coming up, guys. It's absolutely insane. Our goal for next year, one of the big goals, I want to try to record... 100 episodes of the podcast in a year if possible uh 
I don't know if it's impossible. Possible? It'd be insane, but we're gonna try to do that. So that's gonna be on the docket too. So many cool things. But to get there, you know, sign up to the Patreon. It really helps us out. Make sure the show grows, and so you guys can stay informed with everything and help us hit our goal of starting a nonprofit so we can actually stock all of our local waterways. That's the whole point of this channel is to actually help supplementally stock all local places. That's all I have to say. We're gonna finish this up with Marty talking about. Oh my goodness, is that a Demiki Volt? No, that's not. What is that? Monster Bass Vibe Master. They just Vibe came Master. out with these. Oh, wow. Very shiny. Oh, my goodness. I love blade bait fishing. Yeah, that they is just so came cool. out with their own line of blade baits. Um, hey, Thomas, something that I'd really like to see is um, we call them chatter baits. But uh, if you could get someone to do a good seminar on, you know, uh, bladed jigs, that would be awesome. Because there's so many out there right now. Um, all the different variants of the Z-Man chatterbait, the Stealth, the Big Blade, the Jackhammer, the, what's the other one? The Elite, I think. Um, there's so many of those out there. And. You know, maybe if you can get someone to come on and talk about all the different chatter baits and um, <clears throat> when to use the different types. I mean, everyone raves about the jackhammer, but there's so many other ones out there. I think like the the stealth blade is great for finesse type stuff. They got the mm -hmm. mini max as another one. Um, and then, of course, you know, you have uh, uh, Strike King has their what do they call it the slobber knocker or something like that yeah some yeah so there's name, a bunch yeah. of them out there that uh have different applications for different conditions so you know i i'd love to to view a seminar on bladed jigs that would be awesome i just wrote that down because again and guys if, yeah yeah and then again i i keep saying this the only reason I find a lot of guests because we're local and that's why I really try to delve into is you people saying like, I know a dude that's fished this lake forever. Reach out to him. And I do email me at fishing at gmail.com, Instagram, Facebook. Tell me if you want to be interviewed because you thought you have some information to give, I'll interview you. Um, or if you have a friend that you think should be on the show, let me know and I'll get it back right now. I have about, I have 40 people on a list right now that I have to interview. And um, I'm going to start that in January because I'm just kind of got to take a break for the holidays. But we have so many people to interview on this show. It's going to be fun. But keep sending them to me and we'll make that happen. Uh, a link in the episode description to everything that we talked about tonight. Have a wonderful holiday. And if I don't talk to any of you guys again, I'll see you guys tomorrow night for the Patreon only uh, member stream. Or I'll see you on Friday for the Jake's Bait and Tackle special Christmas uh, Eve event. See you next time on Fishing the DMV. Bye. Cool. Later. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.